thank you so much for making time to to have this discussion. Uh, the issue of TV is something that we've been talking about often. And for those who are watching at home, they know Chesang has been <laughs> spearheading this conversation. And we've had a few doctors and even TV champions speaking about the issue of TB. But one thing that kept coming up was the issue of extrapulmonary TB. We, we thought this is an interesting conversation whereby when we talk about TB, people think about the lungs, you know, and how it spreads through that. So it's really interesting to have a conversation with you to understand more. So please, let's start with you introducing yourself, tell us where you are and what you do. Um, English is very challenging. Okay, so we thought <laughs> we thought it would be better if we can speak uh, English for now, but then at the end of it all, you'll have a moment to have a one-on-one -on -one with, with the audience, yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, my name is Duncan Barkebo. Uh, I am a clinical officer, but currently working at the Center for Health Solutions Kenya in Meru County, supporting the Upper Eastern Region, where we support the National TB program to ensure that uh, all um, the TB program is uh, done well and uh, that patients who have TB are treated according to the guidelines and also eliminating TB in the country. Mm. Yeah. So when you talk about Center for Health Solutions, uh, what, what do you mean? Is it a hospital? Yes, yeah, so Center for, thank you very much. Center for Health Solutions is um, a non-governmental organization, which is uh, a local um, uh, indigenous uh, organization led by Kenyans, uh, by, um, I mean, formed by Kenyans and led by Kenyans. And uh, we have a partner in the national government so, um, through donor support from uh, USAID to support the Kenyan government and uh, the people of Kenya in general to address tuberculosis yeah. with the sole aim of reducing the burden of TB in the in Kenya. Uh, yeah. but we we have been around for the last ten years. Uh, and uh, so we've been able to understand the local context and issues around uh, tuberculosis in Kenya and even beyond. Thank you very much. Okay, but do you mind me asking like, what you do exactly wh where you are? Thank you. So what I do exactly uh, where I am is to uh, do different aspects. One, First of all, I'm a clinical provider with patients. So I consult, I see patients in uh, the clinics, but mainly capacity building other clinicians to ensure that they do the right thing in tuberculosis because I have specialization in uh, tuberculosis and lung conditions. Uh, the second thing I do is to uh, offer consistent mentorship. And, 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 and this is a broad aspect of mentoring both the clinicians serving the patient, but also the leadership of the county in terms of ensuring that they prioritize tuberculosis uh, as an agenda, uh, as, a, as, as more of an advocacy role to ensure that I mentor them, to make sure that they put resources for TB, they prioritize TB in their work plans, and they ensure that um, as in the county level, TB is prioritized and, and patients who have TB are, are prioritized to get the best uh, treatment and the quality of care they deserve. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to get later on on why it's important to have TB as an agenda in the country, seeing as TB is an old disease, but we are having this conversation today. But it's good that you specialize on TB because now you can explain to us what do you mean by extrapulmonary TB? So thank you, Jim, uh, Jim Chai. I think the, 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 the first, before even I explain what is extrapulmonary TB, it's important to bring into context uh, the, the, the TB itself, mm -hmm. because we know that um, TB has been around for many years, more than 120 years and even beyond. It's only that in 1882, it was uh, uh, defined by Robert Koch. But um, it has now been shown that TB is a disease which is caused by an infectious uh, bacteria or so germs, which can actually affect the lungs, but also can affect any part of the body. So primarily TB starts by infecting the lungs. Uh, but in, in one way or another, the bacteria can actually take advantage of the immunity of the person to move outside the lungs to go to other places. And it can affect any part of the body, 
uh, except the air, the nails, and the outer part of the teeth, which are basically composed of dead uh, cells. So TB in the lungs is primarily the predominant one, but we also have this extra pulmonary TB, that we call TB, which is outside the lung, um, the lung tissue. And this occurs because the bacteria itself has been controlled by the immunity, but some of the immunity has failed, and therefore they move out through the blood vessels, through the, the those elements we call the lymph nodes, which are basically your immune uh, system uh, mechanisms to go to areas. For example, it can go to the brain, it can go to the bones, it can go to the stomach, it can go anywhere in the other parts of the body. That is what we call now extra pulmonary tuberculosis. Okay. So if someone hears pulmonary TB, that is one in the lung. Anything outside the lung is extra pulmonary TB. Exactly. Very okay. true. Anything outside lung is actually extra pulmonary tuberculosis. That's really interesting. Um, today we wanted to focus on the issue of urogenital TB, and we tried to me and, uh, and the team here at Tilinda, we tried to look at the issue of genital tract TB and urogenital st stood out. So I don't know if you can explain that to us because I have uh, follow-up questions <laughs> regarding what do we mean by uh, a disease in the urine or something like that. So this is usually a very a unique condition. First of all, we need to appreciate that. Uh, the urine, urogenital TB means that it is tuberculosis which has gone to the uh, the reproductive organs and also the urinary organs. And you remember the urinary organs, we have the kidneys, we have the ureters, and even the ureters, which which sheds out the, 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 the urine from the body. We, in the genital uh, system, we have, for example, in women, we have the fallopian tubes, we have the ovaries, we have the uterus, the vagina, and the rest. But in men, we have the prostate, we have the testicles, we have the other parts. And so TB actually can cause, uh, can move all the way to those um, uh, areas of the reproductive system and the urinary system. So when that happens, we call it a urogenital uh, tuberculosis. Uh, and uh, just to put into context, is that it is actually been seen that more, it's more common in women uh, than men, the urogenital tuberculosis. Uh, but there are many reasons that this can occur, but primarily it has been shown that uh, the, the blood system or the blood system uh, feeding the urogenital system for women is much higher because of the fact that they, they are supposed to have babies and know that the uterus is a major organ for the reproductive system. But in generally, we'll say that because extrapulmonary TB is something which uh, is rare, it's usually very hard to, uh, to diagnose and the patients go long before getting diagnosed. And in most cases, even from my experience, this urogenital TB in women has been diagnosed sometimes even in theater, where the, the surgeons actually have operated on somebody who has had uh, things like fibroids, or basically somebody who says they have blocked, blocked the tubes, they are not able to get babies. And when the surgeon opens, they realize the material there is typical of TB, they send to the lab and it confirms TB of the fallopian tubes. Mm -hmm. So this is a reality. Uh, it's although rare, but it is actually uh, existing. Yeah. It's really interesting. You mentioned the delay in diagnosis because uh, there's, there's a, a conversation we need to have on that. But it's also important to, when you spoke about it being able to affect, although it's predominantly uh, affecting women, it can affect men when you mentioned something about fallopian tube in women, because what we were discussing is when you when you try to learn more about different aspects of um, TB in the genitals, there's issue like cervix uh, TB, urogenital TB, and that's what we were asking, is it one and the same, but we know men don't have cervix, or do they? Yeah, of course, uh, men don't have suffix. <laughs> so uh, the suffix is, remember, it's just part of the genital system of a woman. Uh, it is basically the, the opening to the uterus. Yeah, and, so uh, is that can actually, Sorry. Yeah, that can actually happen to actually cause, um, the TB can actually affect the suffix itself. Okay, uh, so... But also can go to the tubes and, and, the, other, and the other parts of the, of, of the, of the reproductive system. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry to cut you. It, that, that's what we were thinking. Eurogenital TB is a disease on its own, and cervix TB is another uh, another kind of TB, extrapulmonary TB, right? It's not one and the same. It, it, no, it's actually the eurogenital TB is a bigger name yeah, okay. uh, to the TB of the reproductive system. And so cervix of the T is one of, it's just part of your eurogenital TB. Okay. Good. Now, now we're learning. <laughs> is it is it a rampant uh, kind of TB, uh, the urogenital TB? It's not a rampant thing. It's urogenital TB is quite rare. Uh, looking at some studies which have been shown, um, I just looked at some of them. They actually note that it's quite rare. It's around two percent of the extrapulmonary TB will actually be urogenital TB. But the the, the interesting thing is that. Uh, women are more affected than men. Mm -hmm. uh, just to put into context, tuberculosis basically affects men mainly in general. The general tuberculosis, uh, for example, globally, fifty-two percent of the of the people who have TB are actually men. In Kenya, sixty-five percent are actually men. Only thirty-five percent of people who have TB are women. And uh, with that, even, uh, uh, of course, we know there are many reasons why that happens. Women are more proactive in their health. When they get sick, they go to hospitals. And generally, even women find themselves in hospitals most of the time because they have to take children to the clinic. They have to go for uh, antenatal care when they are pregnant. They have to take somebody to the hospital when they are sick at home. So they, their health-seeking behavior is quite good. And so TB, because a chronic condition, tends to uh, be less in women. But now when it comes to extra pulmonary TB, it is more, the urogenital TB is more common in the women than in the men. One, because the major contribution is the fact that it is the delayed diagnosis. Uh, the most of the time when somebody presents to the hospital with uh, a genital issues, the reproductive uh, system issues, the most common things are thought by the doctors. And so it is normal to think it is maybe a problem with the cervix, it's a problem uh, inflammation in the tubes and all that. And therefore people really don't think about tuberculosis at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good platform to bring that aspect that yes, um, these genital issues which uh, patients can present, especially women, uh, doctors should actually start thinking about tuberculosis. Yeah. in that sense. I think uh, we're, we're going to take a short break. Uh, I'm speaking to Duncan Barkevo from Center for Health uh, Solutions, speaking about the issue of extrapulmonary TB, and in this case, urogenital TB, and how this affects women, uh, and how does it affect men as well, because we, we were told gender doesn't mean <laughs> female. And we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue with this conversation. <laughs> 